Good morning, Crocker House Creative Arts Center Musical Theater Summer Camp 2020. Welcome to Science with Walker, Global Pandemic Edition. Today we are going to be talking about shadows. So, this is an experiment you can do yourself. All you need is a tall object and a patch of concrete and some chalk. If you only have the tall object, you don't have a patch of concrete or chalk, you can do this in the dirt by putting rocks to mark the boundary of the shadow. We're going to be looking at how the shadow changes over time, and then we're going to use this knowledge to study uh, the passage of time, change of the seasons, seasons and unriddle, unriddle the secrets of the ancient Druid monument Stonehenge. So, what you're going to need to do, you're going to take your object, mark uh, where you're putting it, so that if you're leaving it out here, it's good to mark where it's going anyway, just in case someone comes and moves it, so you don't have to start all over again. It's good to start this early on in the day, and then what you're going to do is you're going to mark, however you're doing this with rocks or with chalk, the boundary of the shadow, and wait a couple of hours, come back later in the day. I'm going to be coming back every, every so often throughout the day, and we're going to look at what the shadow does, and yeah, very cool. Hello, Crockerlings! My name is Professor Walkerson Talkerson, and uh, we're going to be discussing the results of our experiment that we conducted earlier. So, as you will recall, what we saw was that the shadow cast by the large object moved throughout the day. It started off longest in the morning, then it got shortest at midday, and it was long again in the evening. So, uh, we're going to try and figure out why that happened. So the answer has to do with the Earth which are going to represent here as this watermelon, and the sun, which is this land. Now, the reason the shadow moves throughout the day is because the sun moves across the sky. Of course, in reality, the sun doesn't actually move around the earth. The earth rotates on its axis, and from the perspective of someone on the earth, this creates the uh, illusion of the sun moving across the sky. So, take this red pin to be my tall object, and you will see that it casts a shadow because of the light of the sun. And in the morning, when the pin is tilted sort of this way to the sun, you have a fairly long shadow, and that as the earth rotates throughout the day, the shadow gets shorter until it's hardly noticeable at midday. And then as it rotates more, the shadow lengthens, and when the pin is turned all the way around so that it's facing away from the sun, and in darkness, this is nighttime. All right. Next, we're going to use this effect to create a very simple sort of time-telling device called a sundial. And to do this, we're going to need something other than a watermelon, so I'm going to turn this into a stone monolith using the power of camera trickery. Whoa! Uh, not quite a stone monolith, but a piece of sc uh, scotch tape maker. It's going to work the same for our demonstration. So, for this demonstration, we're going to think about things from the perspective of someone on the Earth. So, we're going to say that this is some tall object we've set up. We're going to say that this is the Sun. And because we're on the Earth, really we know the Earth is spinning and the Sun's stationary, and so from our perspective it looks like the Sun's moving, but for the sake of simplicity we'll talk about things from the perspective of the Earth. So, we think that the Sun is moving across the sky, and as it moves, the shadow of this monolith moves. So what we can do, we can create a clock by going out at regular intervals and marking like, oh, the upper corner of the shadow at, um, you know, 6 a.m., the upper corner of the shadow is right here. So we're at a 6, then we go out later, and we go, oh, you know, at 10 a.m., it's right there, 10, at noon, it's right there, 12, and so on. Marking the locations of the shadow. Maybe that's 2 p.m. or something like that. And if we wanted to be more precise, we could fill in the, the in-between times. And then using this, we have a very simple clock. Well, now, the next day, 
we don't have to look at what time it is. We can go out and see that the shadow is almost at the 12 and go, oh, it must be about 10 minutes to 12, probably 11.50 or something like that, and so on. So this is, a, uh, this is an experiment that you can do yourself, much the same way we did the experiment at the beginning just to see that the shadows changed over time. Now you can go out and mark the shadows at specific times, and uh, by doing that you'll have created a clock that in the future you can go back to and tell what time it is based off of. Step right this way and I will read your future in the mystic glowing orb of the druids. Actually, uh, instead we're going to talk about the seasons, but we will get to some druids later on when we talk about Stonehenge and the Solstice. So, stay tuned. Okay, in this example, this mystic glowing orb is going to represent the sun, and uh, this apricot is going to represent the earth. Um, it's a little lopsided, but it's going to work. So we're going to say, for the sake of um, analogy, that this uh, stem spot is the north pole of the apricot, or of, of the earth, and this little thing down here is the south pole. So here's the north pole, south pole. Now, as you may know, the earth is actually tilted on its axis, and it rotates on that tilt like this, and it orbits the, earth, the sun. So, because it's orbiting, staying in this tilted axis, sometimes when it's over here, you'll see that the north pole is pointed away from the sun, like this. And sometimes when it's over here, the north pole is pointing towards the sun, like that. We live in the northern hemisphere of the Earth, which means we live above the equator, which runs along here. So, when we're up here, and the north pole is pointed towards the sun at this side of the orbit, um, the sun is very high in the sky. We get a lot of sunlight, and so it's very hot. This is what we call summer. And then, as we orbit along, uh, the sun gets lower and lower in the sky, but of course this is really just the fact that we're orbiting it uh, at an angle, until over here we have the equinox. This is when the days and nights are of equal length in the fall. And then we keep orbiting until most of the sunlight is shining on the southern hemisphere and it's very cold in the northern hemisphere, and so we have winter. So one of the results of this is that uh, when you're having winter in the northern hemisphere, it's summer in the southern hemisphere, and when you're having summer in the northern hemisphere, you're having winter in the southern hemisphere. So there are a couple of things we can take away from this. We have special names for the, um, the part of the year when, um, when we're over here, the longest day of the year, which is when we're the most pointed towards the sun, that's called the summer solstice. And the shortest day of the year, when we're over here, we're pointed away from it. That's called the winter solstice. And we call the times in between, when the day and night is of equal length, the equinox. So there's a there's a uh, one in the spring and there's one in the fall. So from this, I lost my earth. So ancient peoples were often very curious to know when it was the summer solstice and when the winter solstice was um, with the precision. And so in order to do this, they built a lot of kinds of solstice detecting machines. One of which is Stonehenge, which is this big stone monument. You've probably seen pictures of it in England. Um, out in the middle of a moor, and it's a bunch of standing rocks, and it's built in such a way that on the, well, actually, here, I have a drawing of it. I will show you. So in this book, we have a drawing that shows exactly how Stonehenge worked. Ah, ah, here it is. So, as the Earth moves around the sun throughout the year, um, not only do the days get shorter and longer, but the rising and uh, setting points of the sun move throughout the year. Um, in the winter, the sun rises and sets very far in the south, from the perspective of someone in the northern hemisphere, and in the summer, the rising spots along the horizon move progressively farther north. And so the builders of Stonehenge used this knowledge to their advantage to be able to detect when the solstice was. So you can see, here's this outer circle of stones that has mostly fallen down now, and here's an inner circle, and they lined up the 
inner stones and outer stones with these two standing stones and the side of it to mark this is the spot on the horizon where the sun would rise on the summer solstice. So they had set up so that only throughout this uh, the year the sun would rise in different places and then when the sun rose in such a way that if you were standing here you saw the sunrise lined up through all these rocks then you knew it was the summer solstice. If you wanted to build your very own solstice watching Stonehenge type device there are a couple of ways you could do it. One of the ways to do it would be with uh, stakes. And this is probably something you're going to want help with. You're going to need a couple of people to do this. But uh, the general idea is you set up a central stake. Like this. And then you're going to get up super early on the morning of events like the solstice. We just had the solstice. So you could either do it one of these days and say it's close enough, or you could wait till the equinox, which is going to be in a few months in the fall. You get up super early, let's say it's the equinox, you get your eye down. You want to do this someplace where you have an unobstructed view from the stake to the horizon. Get your eye right on the stake, and you'd watch to see where the sun would rise. You say, okay, the sun's rising right there. And then you, with someone to help you, you get someone to help you out with a stake. And you say, oh, no, 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 move it a little bit to the right or move it a little bit to the left, whatever. You get the stakes lined up so that this stake's lined with this stake, which is aligned with where the sun's rising. And you put this stake in. And then, a little bit later in the year, almost six months from now, there'll be the winter uh, solstice, the shortest day of the year. summer solstice and what you'd see is that throughout the year so like right now we're over close to the summer solstice then the rising point of the sun will progressive will get progressively farther and farther to the south equinox in the fall farther 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 winter solstice and then the rising point of the sun will move back across the horizon and this is what the ancient people who built uh, Stonehenge and a whole lot of other monoliths uh, and archaeological things across the across the globe notice. You don't have to do this with stakes too. Um, if you don't have space to just leave stakes up all year, you could do this anywhere that you have a view of the horizon and you can put little rocks or whatever or you can make markings on something and you can you can track the, the motion what you're what you're seeing again is you're tracking the motion of the earth around the sun at an angle and how that affects where the sun seems to rise in the sky. Hello there, Crocker House kids. I hope you had a fun time coming by for Science with Walker. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're able to get out there and have a good time making solstice catching Stonehenge devices and sundials and things. And um, if you get a chance, go outside and look at the night sky. If you do get a chance to do that, I've written you all up a little something, short explanation about the speed of light, the dimensions of the universe. I'd be very flattered if you get a chance to look at it. If not, don't worry about it. And uh, until next year, and remember, ask not what science can do for you. Ask what you can do for science. Or ask whatever you want. Questions are good. Until next time, stay healthy everybody.